Now with regard to new advances, I think the brain mapping technique has come into its own, especially in the last 10 years. This is a technique where surgeons can identify functional tissue during the course of surgery. So any tumor located near the motor pathway or the sensory pathway or the language systems and now even the visual pathways can be operated on using brain mapping techniques either with patients awake or asleep to identify those functions. So it's a very relevant question to ask your physician, is this the type of tumor that would be amenable to having a brain mapping operation? And they should explain to you if the answer is no or yes, what the rationale is for either not using it or using it during the course of surgery. With regard to the brain mapping technique, the essential aspect of it is to use a technique to localize function. So how do we do that? We take a little probe that has a tiny electrical current and we stimulate the tissue. And that tissue, if it's functional, for example, in the area of the motor system, will cause the opposite hand, for example, to move or the leg to move. Likewise, if we're near the language pathways, we can stimulate an area of the brain tissue that we think would be important for language. And if during the course of the mapping procedure while the patient is awake reading or looking at pictures they can't read or name those pictures, then we know that that is what we call an essential part of brain tissue responsible for language because it's functionally very, very important. So by doing that, we create a brain map, which is essentially a roadmap of the area that we want to remove, as well as the area we want to preserve so that we know while we're taking the tumor out, we're gonna do it safely and we're not gonna remove anything that's functional. And without the brain mapping technique, it can't be done in any other way, even with preoperative functional MRI. There are some potential advances in brain mapping as we move forward. I think probably the most significant um, aspect of that now has to do with the preoperative functional imaging that we incorporate into the navigational station. So we can now take evidence of where function exists on the imaging study to tell us exactly where to do the mapping. So it's very similar to the following analogy. If you want to go to a baseball game, you buy a ticket. The ticket gets you into the ballpark. That's what the functional imaging does. It tells you basically where that area is. But on the ticket, you have a seat number and the, that number specifies exactly where you are gonna find your seat. And so the intraoperative mapping technique tells you exactly where in the ballpark or where within the realm of the brain you're going to find that function. And so one doesn't replace the other. The functional imaging complements the brain mapping. Now, we and others have been working on techniques to look at a different paradigm or a different way to do brain mapping that will probably evolve in the very near future. Currently, as I said, we stimulate the tissue to try to either activate it to get something to move or to inactivate it to stop somebody from talking. Probably a better way to do that would be to record brainwave activity at the time of that task to see if we can find subtle differences in that activity as a means to localize function even further. And we're working on that. And we've actually done this technique. We've published it. And we think in the next five years or so, the field of brain mapping will get even better. But it's pretty good right now. And it gives us really what we need to know.